Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. We are Roach Productions. On location at the Skidrick Inn. Now, the Skidrick Inn, right, is 900 years old, right, and it's one of the most haunted places here in South Wales. Now, this place has a very dark past, very dark history. As you've seen from the advertisements I've done in the last couple of weeks, there's been 182 murders in this property. The place was used for devil worship, and where we're standing right now, the forces of Owen Kandawa once stood here before they burned down loads of English settlements that was in uh, Wales. So, will you come and join us for a night at the Skidrick Inn? So we are at the grave of Fanny Price. Now Fanny Price is known to be one of the spirits that haunts the Skidrick Inn. Now Fanny Price used to work there in the 18th century and she unfortunately died of consumption. She was 35 when she died. Now Fanny Price, she's known to still be at the Skidrick Inn and the residents have told us that when people, when she's there, people do get a scent of lavender. So we'll see if we can contact Miss Fanny Price tonight when we do our paranormal investigation. Okay guys, so this is the room that we're staying in, we're staying in room two, right? Now room two was originally linked up to room one and this, these two rooms used to be the cause house for Skidrick Inn. Now, all the research that we've done and all the papers that we've read regarding this beautiful place tells us that the judge, which is the influenced judge that hung these people, he resides on these upper floors and he is known to hang around the courthouse. Now we're stopping in the courthouse for two nights and we will be calling out to the judge that killed 182 people. We are going to be calling out to this judge because this judge is being put on trial by us 
here at Roche Productions. This day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 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 Hello guys, so it's 11 o'clock at night, right? We've got the entire pool to ourselves, there is no one else here, right? Um, I want to tell you a bit about the history, so um, as I said like before, it's 900 years old, right? Um, they committed... Okay, so um, I just want to point out, we've got the spirit talk of William at the moment. So we can hear different things that we pray, so we can kind of like match with the information that we will know. You know, it helps with us, like with the paranormal investigation part of it, we can kind of like match it up. Anyway, so anyway, um, so we are here in the bar, right? There's a lot of history around this bar as well, like with the different news articles, as you can see. I mean. That they were stationed back to when the place was a poorhouse. Now, there was 182 people who died in this property, right, through being hung, right. Um, I mean, honestly, these these kind of people were there was there was like people who stole sheep to feed their family. Um, there was only like a few murderers. You know, who've actually deserved death, you know. Um, but anyway, there was this judge. And this judge, right, um, was called... Anyway, this judge, right, was called George Jeffrey. Now, George Jeffrey, he was not a very nice man, right. He kind of got like, power hungry and it was killing people left and right for the most minor crimes, you know. Anyway, this guy, boy, George Jeffrey, still resides on this property, boy, and he is known to be up on the upper floors. Now, this is only my one, boy, and I'm not going to lie, at the moment, we're experiencing bits and pieces, but nothing regarding definite evidence, right? But, <laughs> the night is still young, and we have got some pretty messed up experiments. It's not human. As you can see, um, this place has a very dark history, right? And there's a lot of things that have gone on here. Um, there's no positivity here whatsoever, or right? negative. Right? So anyway, we are going to be conducting some of the most insane experiments to try and prove a paranormal presence. And we are going to be starting with this film by reading the Satanic Bible, well, a passage out of the Satanic Bible, to try and entice the devil himself. 
Okay guys, so as promised, uh, I am going to be reading a chapter out of the set ended by war. Now this book was read, written from the head of the Satanic, tem the satanic Temple. Uh, his name was Anton LeBay, right? Now, the passage I'm going to read is is basically offering myself to the devil. So, I'm hoping that this book will act as a conduit and bring in entities because it's the first night and we haven't really been having much luck with the first night to be fair. We've had a few bits and pieces but nothing that we could actually say for definite is paranormal. Okay. So hopefully when we read this passage I will open up a gateway. So here goes. <coughs> In the name of Satan, the ruler of the earth, the king of the world, I command the forces of darkness to bestow their infernal power upon to me. Open wide the gate of hell and come forth from the abyss to greet me as your brother, sister and friend. Grant me the indulgence of which I speak. I have taken thy name as part of myself. I live as the beasts of the field, rejoicing in the fleshy life. I favour the just and the curse and the rotten. By all the gods, of the pit, I command that these things of which I speak shall come to pass. Come forth and answer to your names by manifesting my desires. Now, 180 people were hung in this spot and that was all criminals, according to this one judge. Now, this area of the inn is a very, very harmful place. You know, it's filled with negative emotion, death, you know, fear, sadness. So, it's right or the devils. Ali. So, this will lead us on to the night ahead and we'll see if anything happens this evening because I have just called out the devil himself. Okay boys, so this part of the investigation we're going to be pointing out to the spirits of the skid Skidrick King. Now we've got I had the spirits of the ready all night, right? And they've got some great stuff coming for it. Now if I speak really honest with you guys, these kind of apps they do have some kind of recorded messages on them, so anything come through. Now, the thing is, is that if you ask a specific question for these apps, and then you get an answer for the question, it kind of can't deny it because it's kind of like in tune with the question being asked. Sorry. So this is why the are very willing. Okay. So, I have also got the EMF reader next to me. 
and he's the one who makes the sound, so you'll be able to hear that go off. You won't be able to see the number on it, but you'll hear it go off. Okay? So, I'm going to start. Okay? My name is Lee, and I'm here with Alan. The child wants help. And we are here to ask you a few questions and to make contact with the spirits that reside here. So, we are aware of a few spirits that are here, a few people that are here, and we also know of one specific spirit in which we want to make contact with. So, I am calling out to to George, Jeffrey. Jeff. George, are you here with us right now? George, can you make a bang, a sound, sound, or make a sound on the device that is standing next to me? Okay, George, so let me tell you what I know about you. I knew that you was a judge here, and you had 182 people hung on this property. Don't you feel guilty? Don't you feel hate for yourself? Don't you feel remorse? Because I was. If I took 182 lives, I would feel internal sadness. Do you feel internal sadness? Will you let me know if you do? Come on, George, you can do better than that. See what? You're supposed to be all powerful. You know, you was a judge in your life. You had the power to take someone's life away. If your death was horrible, can you elaborate? Can you let me know how your death was horrible? Because hanging is not a nice way to die. But you said okay with making all them people die. So what was so horrible about your death that you couldn't relate to these criminals that was hung. Can you answer that question? What makes your life and your nasty? Nasty. See, see, George, that isn't answering the question, is it? Okay, so are the people who you hung, are they here 
with you now in this building? Just answer yes or no, George. So why did we answer, George? I wish you all there. Difference to everyone else is. Get the impression you're avoiding the question. Oh, we know how long to this place is. We know who's here. We know who was always here. We know the history of the place as well. So, why are you scared of? Why wouldn't you answer more questions? Why would not you make yourself known to us? So right guys, while we're having a walk to this manor house just wanted to say a few things about last night So, last night we didn't really get much activity uh, It's kind of disappointing really, uh, for us anyway So. I mean, we read the Satanic Bible underneath the stairs and, you know, we were expecting something to happen with regards to it on the evening, uh, but nothing really happened. So we went, you know, went to bed and it was about three o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden we started to hear there was a banging in the room, you know. The door started to shake. The uh, windows and the cones were going crazy, you know. And the wind was going through the chimney, swinging fierce. It was a pretty intense experience, really. But we are in we are in the middle of, you know, a valley. So it could just be the wind overlapping property, you know, oh god. So I'm walking up a hill, a steep hill with that. So, so anyway, uh, hopefully tonight, because we'll be doing the sounds and the Ouija board, and we're also going to the calling now the judge in the courtroom which happens to be our bedroom so we will see what happens tonight so we just got to the property and it looks like it's closed which is great you know well I'll show you the property now So yeah, so we'll see there's uh, another way in, hopefully there is, it's a nice area, it's so quiet, you know, it's really peaceful, so I mean look, you see the oldness of the building.
Okay guys, so the ground that we're standing on now is where Owen Kandela actually rallied his troops for the Welsh conquest of, like, for Wales. So, right, he, um, he actually destroyed multiple Norman villages and he's known for holding a siege against Conway Castle and Harlech Castle. It's quite famous for it. Now, Owen Kandela actually passed away in 1415, right? And he actually retreated up the hills that are in the distance right now. Owen Kandela is the cause of so many deaths here in Wales, fighting for the Welsh people to have their independence. So there's a lot of history linked to not only these grounds, but the building itself. So guys, we have been given access to room three. Now room three is where Fanny Price resided and it's where she died. Now, this room has had paranormal activity because it's believed that Fanny Price still likes to return to this room. Now, we have got some couples set up in this room. One is here on the bed, one's by the pillow, I've got one on the dressing table over there and there's one on this dressing table over here so the whole room's covered, okay? Now, we are going to leave the camera on, running in this room. We're gonna lock the door and nobody is allowed to enter this room. So if there is any paranormal activity, we are hoping we pick it up. prisoner cell and what I'm going to do I'm going to spend a few minutes in there on my own right I'm going to stay quiet see if anything happens and not noises or if not that right so I'll show you now I'm going in. Okay, guys, so I'm in the cell now, right? It's pitch black in there. As you can see, it's like a cleaning cupboard.
So hi guys, so I'm in Fanny Price's room and I'm here in the dark. So I just want to let you guys know that I've got the, the cabal on the bed, cabal on the cabinet and another cabal on the other cabinet. Now the reason I'm back in here on my own The reason I'm in here on my own is because yesterday as I was setting up the cameras, I seen an orb fly past me. Right? So there was something here. Okay. So I've decided to come back in on my own with a camera, spirit box, and the cables. Right? See if we can capture anything in this room. So I'll be asking a few questions. So, <coughs> Fanny, are you with me right now? Fanny Price. Fanny, I'm ever so sorry what happened to you. Who's talking? My name is Lee. I'm with my family. I'm glad you're with your family. We went to go and visit your grave yesterday. And we went to go and pay our respects to you. So, I know it's loud in here, because the place is still open, but we come up and we noticed that... I passed peacefully. I'm so glad you did, so it wasn't painful when you passed. Did you have family around you when you passed? It'd be great if you could make yourself known to me. But now I'm not one of the balls. Blonde hair. Did you have blonde hair? Could you touch me, Fanny? Could you make yourself known to me? Or stand next to me so I can feel you? I'm taking my time. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, thank you very much for trying. We pr I appreciate you. If, if you do make, want to make an appearance in the night, we'll be downstairs, or we'll be in the quarter room, which is next door. So if you do want to make an appearance, please do. You have our blessing. And hopefully, we will see you very soon. Okay guys, so I've just come back into our room now, um, from being in Fanny Price's room. Um, something weird just happened, which I want to be honest about, right? Uh, when I was in there, right, as you've probably seen by the footage that you know, we're about to show you, not really much was going on in there, so we had normal activity, we had the couples wasn't going enough. Um, and there was random things coming through the spirit box, right? Some of them didn't make any sense. So I thought to myself, okay, this is a waste of time. So I decided to call it quits, leave Fanny's room, come back in here. But as I was collecting everything and turning off the cameras and everything, I left the spirit box running in my pocket and I, I normally say to the spirits when I leave a room, okay, we mean, no, we sh I want to show you the utmost respect. Um, if you want to join us in other areas of the property, you're more than welcome to, um, and so on and so forth. It's just a sign of respect from the spirits. Anyway, as I, was, as I said that, through the spirit box, we had uh, come through. Thank you for your respect. And I was like, you're welcome. And then I said, have I spoke to you before? And then it come through, we have spoken before. Then I said, where have we spoke before? And it come through the grave. And then I says, did you, no, did you, did you like die in peace? Uh, and he come through buried. Then I, then he come through said protected. And then I says, well, I am protected. And then he come through saying, you've got to be careful. And then I kind of said, I'm always careful. Thank you very much. And then he come through I'm not playing. Watch yourself here. Then I said, thank you for your concern. How long have you been here for? It come through, I have been here 50 years. Then it come through, I don't want to scare you. And then he said, which threw me, I'm very close by. Now, Fanny Price's grave is literally just up the road. I mean, we, we showed you it, right? And then, and now, since I've come back in this room, it's starting to come through with nonsense again. Now, the weird thing is, is that all this started to happen when the camera was turned off, when we wasn't recording. You know, it was just like me and her talking. So I've got no proof of it. I mean, I can show you my phone with the messages. That's probably all I can do. You know, if you can read the text on the phone, there the words are coming through. So really, that's all the evidence I've got. So I can't, I can't prove. Well, what's happened, but it's really weird. It's really weird that the cameras got turned off and then I had all this come through. 
So that to me is an indication that there are intelligence there. There's a sign of intelligence there. They knew exactly about the cameras and what we were trying to do, but they knew what we were trying to do and they did not want to be on camera. They did not want to be filmed. That's a sign of intelligence. But like I say, don't take my word for it. Um, the meter's just gone to red. Yeah. Is anyone in this room with me right now? Fanny Price, have you come back in here with me? The temperature is changing. There's a change temperature shift. So do some shit here now. You know what? It is weird. So I have all the messages come through. And then the meter has gone off. And now the temperature is fluctuating between 23.6, then it goes down to 23.8. So hello everyone, so it's the end of the night, anyway. Uh, so the paranormal experience that we've had here is being, well, here, miss, to be fair. So, we are going to now do the Ouija board. So, we are going to call out to the spirits in this room and in the inn itself. But, I am going to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to reenact a jewelry because we are actually sitting in the courtroom. So here we go. <coughs> anyone in here with us right now? If you are, can you make yourself known to us? So I am here to sentence George Jeffrey for the crime of murder. You have been sentenced because you killed 182 people to death. What do you plead?
George, are you in this room with us right now? Can you make another light bulb? A light bulb go off for me, please. Let me know where you are. It's me and it's trying to go off as well. Keeps flashing. George. Why? Did you kill so many people in this building? Innocent people. They didn't deserve to die. Not for theft. I mean, these people are just stealing for food to feed their families. And you sent them to death. Do you know how wrong that is? Come on, what do you have to say for yourself? George, can you make that light go off again for me, please? Can you make any other light go off, George? So now you're here, George. I can feel that you're here. I mean, it's not going off even now. Stop. Okay. What I do, I try the board again. And you're welcome to talk to me through the board. Give me your answers. So, one, two, three. <clears throat> George, are you here with us right now?
George. I stopped talking on the board. I said goodbye on the board. But I know you're speaking to us through the lights on the bed. So, can you make that light go off again for me, please? Come on, George. George, I need you to communicate with me. I know you I know you're trying to come through. But I need more. Can you make a bang for me? Thank you, George. Can you set it up again, please? Can you set it up again? Well, maybe you can set one of the other balls off. Seems to be focused, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm thinking? What? This was the courthouse. That's where it was. That's where it was. George, can you make the floorboards creak? Can you do that again and let us know where you no, are? I just heard. Just had a tap in the bathroom. Just had a tap in the bathroom. Ask again. Can you do that again for me, please? Can you make a tap for me? Are you on the bed right now? Can you speak to us? Or move an item? Or maybe touch one of us? Every time we speak to him, 
the ball goes off. Is that correct? There's no way that ball will move on its own, not with all that pain around it. Can you open the door of the bathroom for us? Can you make a noise? Can you tap in the bathroom? Door one. Can you knock the door, tap on the door? Can you tap on the door for us and open the door? If you can open the door for us, that'd be great. I don't think you can open the door, can you? Can you do that for us? Can you make the uh, light on the bed light up? Now, please. This instant. Come on, come on, Ju come on, George. Light the bed. You've been doing it all night. What's one more time? Are you playing around with us? Around with us at the moment. Don't you like when people question you, George? Well, considering you're a judge and all that. Well, we'll, we'll question you. Open the door of the bathroom, please. Well, don't you like being told what to do? Or speak to us. Come on, you can do it. Can you speak to us, please? How many doors have you opened in your lifetime, George? I'm sure you can open one more. Thank you, George, we appreciate it. Can you talk to us now? Well, where's this even George we're talking to? Is that Fanny Price? If, if, if it is Fanny Price, make the light light up now, please. Fanny, you're being so kind to us. Especially to me. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Can you do that again for us, please? Just to let us know you're okay. Can you light up the light on the bed for us and let, you, let us know you're okay? Fanny, was you warning me earlier? You might have walked off if, if you was warning me earlier.
You told me to be careful and that I need protection. Could you make the ball go up if that's true? That's Fanny, guys. Hello, Fanny. How are you? Are you okay, wherever you are? Are you happy coming into this world? Or are you not very happy where you are? Can you make a, no <laughs> make a tap or a noise to say yes or no? When we was in your bedroom, you said that we spoke before at your gravesite. And, uh, you know, I did talk to you. You know, I send you my regards. And we spoke again in your room. Yeah. Thank you. So funny, I want to ask you um, a yes or no question, right? Is the judge still here in this inn? Can you make the ball go off if he is? Can you So if he's not here, where is he at the moment? Can you let us know? Did you enjoy living in this inn? Yeah, because we know you used to work here. Was it a good job? You might have all got a yes. Fanny, we mean, we mean you no harm whatsoever. You've been really kind to us tonight. And we do show you the utmost respect as a person. But if we can just ask for one little thing from you, could you, meet, could you please make a bang or a tap? Just to let us know that you're okay and we will leave you alone, we promise. So what did it look like? passing in front of the face. You can see like it was rations on the face. So if you can imagine. I don't think it was weird. Very weird. But you, there was no definite uh, face. No, just the white. Uh... Yeah, it was like, you know, the only way I can explain it was like, you can imagine like someone putting a towel over your face. Mm -hmm. So you see the imprint of the face, but you can't make it up. Notice that none of the balls, cat balls, are going up there. They're all dead. It's 
Sweater, so as soon as that figure's wet, it's a wee wince. 